All right, welcome back to new touch designer tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at this comic effect that you can see here. And I'm just gonna show, uh, like, by moving my camera a bit, because it looks a lot cooler when you use an input that that actually moves through a 3D space or has a lot of detail. So, yeah. Um, this is uh, based on three layers. So we have like the layers of the lines that you can see all, ar all around me, like the black lines. And of course you can change like how many lines you, you wanna see and like how thick they should be and stuff like that. And um, the second layer is the, the sort of color or like surface layer. So you can see we have uh, like around four colors that we can see here right now. And of course you can use any colors, but right now I'm using sort of a color palette from the input that I'm getting. And um, right, so the, the third layer is the, the points. So that's made with instancing. So you can see wherever there's a darker uh, spot, we, we get these uh, points to really, to really get this comic sort of look. All right, so let's get started. All right, so this is what our uh, network looks like. We have um, right now the camera input and then our three layers. So this is uh, an instancing network for the points. Here we're using um, some blurring and limiting to make the colors and here we're making the lines. And then we're all just compositing them together and we get this final result. So as usual, I'm going to delete everything, but uh, in this case, I'm going to just leave these two here, so like a, an image and my video device input. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, let's just work with this actually and add a fit. And I'm going to uh, change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. And uh, the fit is, we're using the fit so we have like the same resolution for all images. And you're gonna see why that's uh, why that makes sense. So let's change to fit to fit outside. So we fill the whole screen. And then I'm gonna just add a null here with Alt N and then we can call this input because we're gonna like start a few branches from here and we're also gonna reference this with Python. So it makes sense to have like one uh, null here. And I'm just coloring that with C so uh, we know it's sort of important. All right, I'm going to start with uh, the lines. So I'm gonna add a limit and um, change the quantize to floor and the value step to 0.2. Then I wanna add a blur and, uh, whoops, that wasn't a blur. Uh, blur and set this to like two and 12. And then we can add an edge and uh, change this to 10 and like three and three. So we're using this edge to just uh, get the outlines, and um, right, you don't you don't really need the limit, and you're gonna see why in a second. You can already see that here. It just it just like it also works, of course, without the, the limit, but it gives a bit more detail. Um, so now it really just looks like a an, the good old edge effect, which doesn't look that good. Uh, so we might want to go down with um, the color to black and then add another limit here to make this look a bit more like it's drawn. So now on this limit we can set this to round and change this to like 0 0.5, 9, uh, 0.95 and now you can already see this looks a lot better. So now this looks a lot more like somebody actually drew these lines. And that's already it for the lines actually. Let's uh, now continue with the colors and then composite them. So let's add a blur. And let's change this blur to like 25, uh, the filter size. And uh, one thing you can do here is just use a limit, technically. And again, just uh, change this to like uh, a floor and then the value step to like 0.3. And you can already see the comic sort of effect taking place here. But it's also really uh, like changing the colors or abstracting the colors, which I don't like that much. So um, I would suggest using an HSV adjust to get rid of the colors. 
and like go down with this saturation multiplier here. So we just have a black and white image and now you can already see this looks a lot better. And then what we can do, we can use uh, either a resolution or a ramp. I'm gonna make both of these. And um, then we can add a lookup to now color this black and white image. So with the resolution, we can uh, change this to custom resolution and also change the output aspect to resolution. And now we can change this to like five and one and also go, go ahead and change this to the nearest pixel. And uh, then it's sort of taking the, um, like some, like a palette of the incoming image. So that's kind of a trick to just get like a, a palette of, of whatever image you want to have. Um, otherwise, like if you, if you don't want to do that, uh, you can also like, yeah, you can also adjust this, but you can also go ahead and change like this to the same resolution. And so the resolution X, like the width basically is, is pretty much saying how many colors we have. So, um, we can go ahead and change this to like, a like a blue and like a pink maybe and then put that in here and now you can see it's it's colored in that way so now let's add a composite and um, put that in here change the order change this to over and let's just add another no call it bg as usual and it already appears here because i have set this up in the usual way so the parent container background top to dot slash bg and also I have selected panel here. All right, so cool. Now we got the uh, color and the lines working. And now we just need to make the grid, which is gonna be a bit more work than these two things. So I'm gonna just go ahead and um, add each operator and just make a little instancing network. And then uh, when I've done that, we're gonna go through all the operators and I'm gonna explain what I'm actually doing. So let's add a level here and a resolution. And from here, let's add uh, two ramps. So I'll just add one and copy it. The first one we wanna make horizontal. Let's change this to RGB and uh, make sure that our white is red. So just go down with green and blue. Let's make this one vertical and let's make our white green. Let's also go to our resolution and actually change the pixel format to 32 bit float RGB. Let's go here and uh, add a math for both of these. And let's add another level from here. And let's also add a, another math from here. Then I'm just gonna add a reorder and a null, which we're gonna call inst for instancing. And I'm gonna come back here. So now we wanna make the render network. So we just create a circle. So this is gonna be our points. Uh, so we wanna make this fairly small. So we add a transform and change the uniform scale down to like 0 0.004. And then we can add a geo and a camera. All right, then we can add a render to actually render this. And let's just make sure our render has the same resolution as our uh, fit. So let's go to fit resolution, copy the parameter, go back to the render and pass the reference here. All right, so let's turn the viewer off for all of these and go to our geo and turn on instancing. Right, so what we want to do now um, is actually make a circle for every pixel on the screen. And then we want to use the, um, the brightness values to um, scale these circles. So first off, how do we position them? That's what these uh, ramps are for. This is going to be our X positioning and this is going to be our Y positioning. But first we need to make sure that we don't have that many pixels because right now we have 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is a lot of pixels. So meaning a lot of circles. So I want to go down with this so we can just use like an eighth of this. So now if we look here, middle mouse, it's 240 by 135. 
Cool. So this is going to be the same resolution because we're inputting that here. And um, let's just add all of these into the reorder. And it's important in, in which one you put them. So we use TX, uh, like, yeah, this is going to be translation X uh, as our channel. This is going to be the, our uh, G channel. And this is going to be our blue channel. So um, let's uh, select the corresponding inputs here. And now you can see this, this is what you should be seeing with your input image as blue. All right, so let's make let's let's go to our geo here and uh, use this instancing uh, operator as a default instance op, and let's select r and g as our uh, translate y and translate x. Um, we also might want to go ahead and already add a composite here and put that in here change the order and make this change this to over so now we kind of get a pirate here uh, we, we just get like a, a black rectangle which is fine so just so you're you can be in control of the color I would suggest adding a constant and uh, again let's change this back to now let's actually change it uh, let's actually leave it, leave it as white for now so we can see it better and um, right so why is it a square and why is it at that position so it's a square because we were like both the uh, x and y are ranging from 0 to 1 so <clears throat> that's that here we have 0 on, on x and y and that's just going up for y and up for x so I want to change that and uh, make this, for example, minus one and minus one here. So now it's still a uh, square though, like it's it works and it only works because we have set this to 32 bit float on, on here. So make sure you have selected that or you can also select on the ramp. Um, Right, so it's still a square. We want to make sure it's the same aspect ratio as our input image, so as this null. So what we can just do is go to our math and type in op input dot width, and then we get a very high, uh, oops, very high number, 1920 of course, and we can just divide this by a thousand, um, or you know, whatever. Um, and then we can copy and paste this and just make a minus before the fir uh, first one. So now we can just copy this and pass the, ref uh, pass the expressions here. And let's change this to height and also to height in here. And now you can see this has got the right aspect ratio. So we can just see that here as well. No, no, actually we can't. Never mind. <laughs> um, right, so let's go to our camera to view and let's change this to orthographic. And now we can just mess around with the uh, ortho width to make it fit. I uh, figured out that 3.8 is a good value for this. 3.81 maybe. All right, so now you get this grid of, um, of points. So you can see this nicely. Um, and Let's actually go ahead and make these black now. Hmm, whatever. Um, what we want to do now is uh, scale them based on the brightness. So we can just use our B channel, blue channel for that. Let's, let, let, let us change this to black. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right, you can barely uh, see that now. I'm actually going to make this even bigger. Um, so what we want to do now is, uh, so I'm using P by the way to toggle this. What you can see here is if we look at the image, here we have white and like the hair is like kind of bright. So um, <coughs> wherever it's bright right now, we get the points. Uh, so that's not really what we want. We want it to be the other way around. So we can just go to our level and invert this. So now wherever there's uh, darker parts, we get the um, we get the dots. So to get rid of um, 
it's wherever it's bright so wherever it's sort of medium bright there's still going to be uh, um, black dots so let's go to the first level go to range and go down with the in high so you, with this parameter you can change the amount of points you you can see so maybe set it to like 0.5 I guess and um, let's go to our math <coughs> and change this the range to like 0 and 2 so we get like bigger circles and you can also go down with the brightness here a bit to to have more more adjustment more adjustment options right so this is uh, basically it uh, you can also go to your math and go to integer and like change this to round for example and then all of your um, all of your points are going to be the same size Actually, let me just close this and uh, show it here in the background so you can see it a bit better, maybe. Um, right, so you can change that uh, or to ceiling, so you're going to see more, or like floor, so you're going to see much less. Or just turn it off so you have the scale, <coughs> the different scales. Uh, let's We can change this back to, to me. <laughs> so let's have a bit of a look of what you can do here. First thing I would suggest doing is uh, adding uh, two things here at the end. One is the transform. And um, let's change the background color to like white and turn the back comp over background color on. So this is just to make sure that if there's any alpha that we, you know, we, we have a constant background. And the other thing, and this is really important because if you look very closely, especially on your machine, you're gonna see that. Uh, these edges, like the, the the lines, are sort of like not looking that good. They're kind of have these they kind of look pixelated. So we can just use an anti-alias at the very end, and maybe change this to ultra, and uh, then you get really smooth lines. So it really makes a difference. Um, it's really satisfying, actually. <laughs> All right, um, right. Let's look at the colors. Uh, no, we don't actually need to look much at the colors. So I already explained this. <laughs> you can change uh, the the resolution here to have different sort of like looks from your image, or you can use any ramp um, to to drive the colors here, or you can just get rid of the lookup and have it black and white. Um, for the uh, lines, you can get rid of the limit, as I said in the beginning, and then you have a li little bit less detail, actually. So I think this is uh, the limit, sort of, you know, you get make you get these sort of lines in here that you don't have without it, so it's a lot more interesting. The blur, uh, if you turn the blur off, then you can see uh, it gets all the details, which, you know, doesn't look very drawn. And, uh, of course, the edge is very important to get lines. And um, if you turn off the limit, it looks very odd, like, you know, very digital, like a bad effect. <laughs> right, and yeah, mess around with these levels to, to adjust your points. You could technically, of course, also just use a rectangle if that's something you'd, you'd like to do. So it's a bit of a bit different feel. And um, one thing you, you can also consider doing is using a noise to like displace um, a noise and a displace to, to displace the points or to displace the lines. So I can just very quickly show you how you could do that. So like a displace here, add a noise here, put that uh, in here and just change the RGB to noise. And let's go down very t quite a lot, like 0 0.05 maybe. 0.01 I guess and um, maybe make the period a bit bigger so this way it's just a bit more you know might be a bit more interesting it's kind of distorted you can also go up with the harmonics I don't know just so you get a, a feel of it all right I think that's it for this tutorial Thank you very much for watching and thanks to all the um, patrons and people who are supporting me. It's really, really nice and I'm very grateful. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you want to have some, you know, more videos, more content, if you want to support me, have a look in the description. I'm leaving a link there always. 
And um, yeah, if you're sharing this, uh, feel free to um, credit me at Electronaut. And yeah, um, I'll see you in the next video.